Prime Television Stakes, one of the richest quality race meetings, with total prize money of $150,000. See the big race live on Prime from 3 o'clock on Friday. Welcome back. I've been looking forward to this segment. Normally I'm with Keith Hillier. Today with Max Press. Well, we can gang up on you, Max. <laughs> How are you going, Max? I'm going very well. And you'll note uh, Keith Hillier, since you, you last appeared on television with him, I think he's age considered. Actually, I think he's aged much better than you have, Max. How are you going, Keith, down in Melbourne at Melbourne Park today? I'm doing well, thanks, Bruce. And uh, as I was saying before we were interrupted, great time of the year for racing. We've got the Australia Day Stakes, or the Australia Stakes at Mooney Valley today, and Mahogany going for his eighth Group 1. Are win. you tipping him? Yes, I am. I think he'll win. Max, I needn't ask you. We used to call you Mahogany, Max. No doubt you're tipping him today. No, uh, no. actually, uh, Bruce, uh, Mahogany was my favourite when he was a younger horse. I think he's a bit difficult to catch today. I think Flavour will beat him. OK, Flavour from the Hawk stable, the three-year-old. Keith, on a uh, serious note, uh, Lee Friedman, uh, an amazing story. Just before we talk about the latest developments yesterday where the, uh, the blood test for Fashion Cafe showed an irregularity and the filly had to be scratched, he had this to say on Melbourne News on Friday night, the day before the Fashion Cafe incident. Also, plenty of uh, sinister elements at work that like to make, try and make life difficult for you. Tall poppy syndrome? I think so. So Lee has been under the gun, uh, Keith, for quite a while since the Encosta de Lago situation and the bicarbonates. What's the latest after yesterday? Well, the, um, it's an amazing situation, uh, Bruce and Max. Uh, Lee has uh, been the subject of what uh, police have described as malicious rumours. In fact, the Gaming and Vice Squad in Melbourne have had 50 calls from the media because of the uh, ongoing rumours. Now, here's a statement from Chief Inspector Kim West, who is the acting uh, head of the Gaming and Vice Squad. He said the police are not conducting any inquiries into Lee Friedman and they're there are no ongoing inquiries at all. So that surely is a very much a door closing and definitive statement, isn't it? Yet Lee yesterday, I believe, I wasn't in Melbourne, was really upset about what was going on. It's obviously got to him. Yes, it has. And, of course, the news from yesterday at Caulfield was, was that a pre-race uh, irregularity was discovered in uh, uh, his uh, two-year-old Philly yeah. Fashion Cafe. And uh, he was upset. He was, uh, well, he went the colour of a... He went purple. And uh, his brother Richard was close to tears. Very uh, emotional scenes. Uh, he then offered, uh, asked the stewards to uh, uh, inspect all the horses in his block uh, at Caulfield. He invited them to inspect the additives that he feeds his horses and he assured them that he'd given uh, his horses no additives that would in any way breach the rules. The result of that uh, analysis won't be known for a week. I believe he's prepared to pay for that analysis himself. So he's deadly serious, isn't he? The point is, Bruce, uh, Bruce with a lot of irregularities, they don't come to much. Uh, a re regularity, something shows up in the, in the sample, but they can't define it, and it's, uh, I, I would say, quite a few of them. When they can't, uh, you, you, I've, I've heard uh, a trainers interviewed many times on irregularities that have never come to anything. Mm. Is this story going to go away? Well, uh, I thought the, the bicarb issue was, uh, was declining, but uh, there again, yesterday it's flared up. No, I, I don't think it'll go away for the time being. Well, it can't go away when it involves the leading trainer in our state, can it? No, and in Australia, arguably. I mean, with, with Gay, obviously, and John Hawkes and, and the Hay Stable. Let's go to the races. The, the, the race that Fashion Cafe, in fact, was scratched from was one of the previews to the Blue Diamond. It was won by an impressive first upper. Be discreet leads from Export Gold settling a length and a half away third. They're followed by Scandinavia in third placing and then came Tregarian on the outside of Celia from Rose of Danehill. It's a giggle and then came Jingle Bells. One to Cornwall, Queen Desert, Mistral, Tennessee Moon is second to last and Chantess is three lengths behind them. At the turn, be discreet in front of Export Gold. Scandinavia can't get a run at the leader at the moment, held up behind it. Uh, it's trying to get up along the inside, not much room there and here's Tregarian coming with Celia on the outside. Be discreet at the 200 metre mark in front. Now Scandinavia switches to the outside. Tregarian is battling, so is Celia, followed by It's a Giggle. Be discreet in front. Scandinavia the only danger. Be discreet a neck in front of Scandinavia, driving hard, and Scandinavia got up to win it. Right on the post over, Be discreet. It's a Giggle, two lengths away, third. Followed. Looks very promising, but it's one of those, it's the time of the year, isn't it, where we see the best two year olds come out, and there's no surprise to see a first upper win a race like this. Yes, they've got to be good, and I do think Scandinavia is good. Good from the Blue Diamond point of view, but uh, uh, perhaps just a bit too speedy for the Golden Slipper point of view. I think Scandinavia could have uh, led 
probably uh, yesterday and still won. Certainly the figures were very, very good, a very good racehorse and should be uh, one of the top contenders for the Blue Diamond. Trainer John Sadler described her as good as Lady Jackio. He won the Blue Diamond with Lady Jackio. 57.36 she scampered over the thousand yesterday. She cost 180,000. I think she's very good, Bruce. Yeah, and it's worth a million dollars the Blue Diamond this year, so it's a, it's a nice old lead up to the $2 million golden slipper. Let's have a look at the other prelude and again an unraced. Ironically, Lee Friedman won this race and this was race two, about a half an hour before the big drama with Fashion Cafe. At the turn, Henry's Hill is the leader, two lengths to any rhythm and sports on the outside, hanging a little bit around the turn, and they've got away four lengths on knowledge and then Garnier, but Henry's Hill led into the straight, a couple of lengths in front of any rhythm second, and on the outside, sports has balanced a bit better, but Henry's Hill has a mighty lead, getting home well as knowledge along the inside, inside the 200, and Henry's Hill is getting a little tired, and knowledge is pouncing after him now, he sprints on the lead, any rhythm and sports is down the outside, but knowledge first up, bursts away, and knowledge by two lengths to sports I think second Bradman a good run getting up on the inside in a photo with could have a pun there couldn't you Bradman a good run he made, <laughs> he made a couple <laughs> Keith how do you rate knowledge who to me looking from afar looked a bit more babyish than Scandinavia and uh, yes. Max was making the point, maybe more a golden slipper horse than a blue diamond. How do you rate knowledge? Well, his time was about a quarter of a second slower than Scandinavia. Uh, he was a little big, he was a little green, but at the end he was uh, a little too good. Uh, the win was unexpected. Uh, he was a drifter in the betting. I think he started at 16 to 1. But it was a very impressive debut, a workmanlike debut. Of the two previews of the day, my leaning was to Scandinavia, the filly. Uh, I can't disagree with you Keith but I do think knowledge has got a great scope for improvement and uh, while I as I say I'm, I'm not disagreeing I do think that the other horse could well by golden slipper time uh, be one of the top hopes at Rose Hill. I thought it might be a subject uh, with which you run for me you Max knowledge I mean you've been sending me faxes with stamps on for the last <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> now the big race yesterday uh, in Australasia was the Wellington Cup, a time-honoured race at Trentham. Uh, Darren Beedman was there and so was Grant Cooksley. Beedman finished second, Cooksley third. A horse called Ed won, who'd won it a couple of years ago. He's coming to Sydney for the Cup. It was a slogging finish and when we pick it up there's about eight chances. Sapio, we've got Bonsai Pipeline, Ed and chuck a shot over on the outside. Ed's coming back at Bonsai Pipeline, chuck a shot on the outside. Ed in front, LAO Sullivan wins his first village in Cup. Lance O'Sullivan's first Wellington Cup, uh, the old story when they're so close together means they're no darn good. I mean, is that being too harsh? No, I, I think that's pretty close to the mark. Just how good are the extreme distance stayers uh, in New Zealand? I think there's a big question mark over them. That was a query, yeah, wasn't it, with too. Senator... Sorry, Keith, that was a query with Senator last year. He ran a great race in the Melbourne Cup, but he was superior, but we didn't think they were up to our standard. I think this race uh, probably uh, illustrates the, the fact that the New Zealand uh, standard of stays has dropped. Ed's seven years old, he's been off the scene, he, I know he won the race a couple of years ago, but he's been off the scene with injuries and I think they're not uh, no longer the force that they were mm. because their, their uh, yielding markets have been plundered. Probably the most significant thing that's come out of the New Zealand carnival is the fact that our jockeys are now prepared to go there and our stayers, we had a stayer win the Auckland mm -hmm. Cup. Beedman's been very successful, and you're going to see, I think, a lot of Australian jockeys riding offshore. Look, I want to keep talking two-year-olds. General Nadim, this is a couple of weeks ago, won the Magic Millions. We're going to have a look at his win right now. We might chat over this as, just, to, just to see how impressive he was. You know, he beat some good horses here, uh, Super Dane chasing him home. He beat one of yours that we thought was very good. He just went past there and gave it pneumonia from the big stable. Dipman rode him. Is he the golden slipper horse? Well, the Magic Millions isn't really noted as, as, as a golden slipper trial, but this horse, he, he does win well, he's got speed, you can't discard him, but put it this way, at this stage, I'm looking for something else. Keith, have you got an opinion on General Nadine? Yeah, I think he's probably as good as anything we've seen so far, but it does make it hard, and probably that's the point Max was making, to stay up for the slipper when you win the Magic Millions. I mean, Clan O'Sullivan was the best guy out of that race as a slipper prospect. He failed narrowly in the slipper, uh, but I think something fresh will come on the scene and maybe it might be the Philly Scandinavian. Look, the sad story during the week has surrounded Hariba. Ironically, he was to run today in the Australia Stakes. He won it two years ago. It was his masterpiece. 
Out three lengths to Primacy, a gap then to Durbridge, Paris Lane. Down the grandstand rail and Scalacci under a good hole, goes up to Sequalo. Two to Spanish, mix in there, clear now, Blue Boss and Belzevia. Hariba over on the flat side and down the outside, Sequalo and Scalacci and running on Spanish mix. Hariba over on the fence in front. Yes, it's Hariba over on the inside, he explodes Hariba. Five, six in front, Spanish mix, Sequalo and Scalacci, but Hariba a world beater. Hariba wins the race by five lengths. Brian Martin was right that day. Frank Sedgman, a part owner, of course, a great Australian tennis player on this day. At this stage, we're hoping his life can be saved. Just about run out of time, Keith. I tell you one disappointment. Yes, no Bruce. scones in Sydney. We had those for six years in Melbourne. <laughs> OK, Bruce. Yeah, doesn't Keith show it? <laughs> Thanks very much, Max. Catch you later and have something on mahogany. Don't jump off the bandwagon, Max. Good on you, Keith. We'll catch both Max and Keith next week. We'll take a break. OK, you've waited and they aren't far away. Coming up, the plays of the year. We're crossing to Melbourne to preview today's men's singles fight at the Ford Australian Open. He wanted to play on the most famous football ground of all, but Jonah may never play again. But next, he fell into her arms when she was 11 years old, and she rode him to goal. But now Wendy Schaefer contemplates life without sunburst.